Okay, what do we got here? <laughs> Lost track. You know what? We're supposed to have special music. And I, I want to tell you a story. Who's supposed to do it? Ruth. Ruth? Hold up, Ruth. I want to tell you a little story. I got a message today, and at the end of the message, I had planned on, I'm nervous enough as it is, and I don't like to sing. The girls think I can sing, but I don't like to sing. And uh, I, had, I had plans of doing a, a song after the, the, uh, the message, but me and Linda just never got together you know, to, to practice it. And I show up this morning, and guess what? I didn't realize that they thought that I was the special music, you know. I, that's not what I planned on, you know. I planned on being an addition to, you know. So anyhow, graciously, Ruth, you know, said, oh, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll come up with something for you. Well, then, as I sit here and, and I, I, I think about it, we're not going to play. Do you have the cheap music on? Can I see it? Yeah, I need the words. But... Uh, I've sung a song hundreds and hundreds of times, but I got a feeling I'm probably going to forget the words in the middle of it. So what I want to do, because and you understand after I get done with the message today, what I'm about to do, I want to show you two different scenarios of, of, of a you know, piece of music, how it can sound one way, and hopefully when me and Linda get together one day and we actually get this down, I'll show you how it sounds another way. The so Lord, please be with me. Because I'm not only, I, I want to really, literally step out, I want to step out here and, and be with me. I don't know whether I sh should, I have this on or should I do it without? Okay. Well, me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus. Got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. I knew a man that once was a sinner. I knew a man that once was a drunk. I knew a man he once was a loser. But he went out one day, made an altar out of a stone. Me and Jesus got our wrong thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our wrong thing going. And we don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Jesus brought me through all of my troubles. Jesus brought me through all of my trials. Jesus brought me through all of my heartaches. And I know that Jesus ain't gonna forsake me now. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our own thing going. And we don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Now we can't afford any fancy preaching. We can't afford any fancy church. And we can't afford any fancy singing, but you know Jesus got a lot of poor people out doing his work. Me and Jesus got our wrong thing going. Me and Jesus got it all worked out. Me and Jesus got our wrong thing going. We don't need anybody to tell us what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. <sighs> 
Okay, there's one thing off my bucket list, you know. But, uh, okay, the reading from today is from Galatians, chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. When I saw that there was, they were not following the truth of the good news, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew, by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you trying to have these Gentiles obey the Jewish laws that you have abandoned? You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. And yet, we Jewish Christians know that we become right with God, not by doing what the law commands, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we have belief... So we have believed in Jesus Christ we, that, we might, that we may be accepted by God because of our faith in Christ and not because we have obeyed the law. For one, I'm sorry, for one will ever be, no one will ever be saved by obeying the law. I hate reading in front of people. But, uh, <clears throat> okay. We ready, Matt? Okay, some time ago, you know, we were in a church here, and uh, we found an old church photo directory from 1991, and I, so I took the photo directory home, I scanned some of the pictures onto my computer, and uh, I'd like to share some of them with you at this time. Oh, look at that, we got the, we got the stoners, and I, I want to, that's about the only family that doesn't have something in common. Well, no, they, the girls got it. There's a, there's a common denominator in all these pictures. The girls had, it was hair. Girls had big hair, and the guys had facial hair for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it's a good-looking one. What's our next one? Oh, we got the yoders, you know. Looking good up there. Next one. There we go. Oh, the Yatlings. That's, uh, oh, my. Where's Lisa at? Yeah. Change a little bit, you know. How about next one? Oh, the Wilsons. That's, uh, is Wayne, Wayne, have you always had that beard? That's fine. Ready for the next one? There we go. Oh, there's Jerry and Pauline. Man, must be something up in the air in that, in that corner up there, you know, with the fountain of youth up there. What do we got? The Gretz. Yeah. Oh, we got the gas. Next one. Oh, where's Joe? Still got that mustache, Joe? Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, we're all a little grayer. There's Bruce and Sue, yeah. Oh, the Schaefer's, they here? Oh, they're not here today. I thought. Mr. Stoner. Looking good in that beard. Is that it? Okay, now see, I was not attending you know, this church at that time, or any church for a matter of fact. You know, so I didn't have any formal pictures taken in 91, but the next year, in 92, I did have a couple photographs taken, you know. But, uh, that was the year I got married, obviously, you know. That was the prom, actually. No, that was the prom, you know. But, uh, but uh, no, anyhow, as you can see from these pictures, we've all changed. And it's said that the only thing that is constant is change. This is my third time coming up here before you now, you know, to give a message. And uh, each time I come up here, I try to talk to you about things that are concerning me the most at the time. The first time I came up here, I spoke to you of, of how important it was to serve God by serving others. Last year, unfortunately, I came up here and I spoke to you and I told you about all the struggles I had been going through with my faith at the time. But as I had said before, the only thing that is constant is change. So that is what I want to talk to you today about, is change. By now, everyone knows that Reverend Henley will be leaving us here shortly, and we'll be getting a new pastor, Reverend Kathleen Barnhart, the first female pastor in the history of this church. Now, I've not met the new minister yet, and I'm, I'm sure that she will do things a little bit different than what we are accustomed to, but I am okay with that. I personally feel that we need a little change maybe around here. You know, I've attended other churches to where the congregation is a little bit more active, you know, during the service, to where you may hear an, an amen while the, the, while the pastor is talking, and, and you'll see a hand raised in the air, you know, as they're singing a song, you know, praising God, you know. 
I believe that Methodist service are a little bit more conservative than some other denominations and basically sometimes a little bit dry, you know. And it seems like we sit here with our arms either crossed or at our side, and that's about it most of the time, you know. It's about all we can do to, uh, you know, to clap for the choir sometimes, and that's a shame because we have a, we have a really good choir, you know. I know that some of you will not be happy with what I am talking about today, but, but just listen to me. Take the time to look around, and you will see that the only churches that are growing nowadays are the churches that offer a more contemporary service. Just look around our own congregation. We have hardly anybody here that attends this church after they graduate high school until they have children of their own. Why is that? You know, a lot of people come to church each Sunday because that's what we're called to do, and they feel a sense of duty and obligation to be here. And a lot of parents, particularly young parents, come because they want their children to grow up in the church. They want their children to grow up to be good people, you know. But for those who do not feel that sense of duty and obligation and they don't have children, they need more to attract them, you know, to come here each Sunday. You know, then, you know, once they're here then, it's our job then, you know, to help them to grow, to feel that sense of duty and to help them, you know, as their children grow. Now, I'm not saying we need a rock band up here. You know, I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is we just need to loosen up a little bit. Take a breath. Enjoy being here. Praising God can be fun, you know. Some may say that that's just not right. But let me remind you of the story of King David. You know, in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 6, when the Ark of the Covenant was being bought, brought into Jerusalem, you know, and the people, they were playing harps and lyres and cymbals and all kinds of instruments. And King David, he was just dancing around having a good old time. You know, and his wife, who was Saul's daughter at the time, she says, quit doing that. You know, you're making a fool out of yourself. You know, don't do that. And he says, no, I, I, I am. I, I don't care what people think because I am praising God, you know. And does anybody remember how the Bible, how God described King David? He described him as a man after his own heart. Now, I'm sure you've noticed lately that it's, it's been a little, little thinner. This is actually probably the best turnout we've had. You know, I know it wasn't because of me, you know, but, you know, probably the best turnout we've had in, in a month, you know. And so I called Lisa the other day, and I asked her, I said, you know, what's, what's our numbers been for the month, you know? Can you give me, you know? So uh, she said, we've been averaging for the last four weeks about 100 people a week. And you may say, man, that's, that's not too bad, you know. But on paper, we have 428 members in this church. You know, so that means that not even 25% of us are showing up for Sunday you know, for church. You know, granted, some have moved away, you know, or they're, they're shut in and they can't be here. That still leaves over 50% of the church not showing up. You know? You know, I've, seen, I've, I've been to other churches, unfortunately, to where nobody wants to do anything to change, and then the attendance starts to drop. And before long, there's no more outreach ministry. There's no more anything. You're just trying to keep the lights on, you know. If you recall, Reverend Henley put in our newsletter some, some notes from a book that he had read called The Autopsy of a Deceased Church. There were nine symptoms of illness within a church. And unfortunately, I believe that we suffer from at least four of them. The church becomes preference-driven. That's number four. It's, it turned into about me and I and my instead of the needs and the preferences of others. You know, there's a few around here that, that have the attitude that it's either their way or the highway, and, and that's not how it's supposed to be. It should be whatever is best for the church. Number three is obsession over the facilities. Again, there are some, I, I know their hearts are in the right place, but they've lost sight of what the church is supposed to be doing. It's not worrying about this or that or how it all looks. It's about spreading the word. It's about bringing in new members through those doors and more importantly, leading them to Christ. Number two is the past is glorified. The past was great. I love looking you know, at old photos and reminiscing about the old days and how things used to be. But the past was not always that great, you know. The church has been here for nearly 150 years. And in that time, I know that even though I was not here, that it has went through its shares of ups and its downs. But nobody seems to want to remember you know, the bad things. We just want to remember the good. 
and we sweep the bad things and you go underneath the rug. And number one, in my opinion, is the church refuses to look at its surrounding community. You know, church attendance is dropped off at most churches, doesn't matter what denomination or, you know, what it is. You know, and I've heard of many different reasons, you know, why, you know, uh, why that is. And some of them we cannot control. But one of them is that society is changing, and we need to change with it. Now, I'm not saying that we change our beliefs, our fundamentals, or our foundation. I am saying all we do is change the way that we present God's Word. Unfortunately, the days of, of Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra and Ella Fitzgerald are, are gone by the wayside for the most part. And most people listen to something a little bit more upbeat. You know, nothing makes me feel happier is when I'm singing along, you know, to a third day or a Jeremy Camp song. And for those of you who don't know, that, that's a, they're a contemporary Christian, you know, artist, you know. But I also enjoy singing along to a traditional hymn, especially if you add in one or two instruments along with it. It just changes the whole way that it sounds and it feels. And that's why I, I wanted to give you this morning what I did. Because I want to show you what a song sounds like one way. And in a couple weeks after me and Linda get together, you know, when we could put a beat to it, I want to show you how much more, how much better it can sound, you know, when you put some instruments with it, you know. I know some of you may not want to change. And if things don't change, the church will probably still be here and open throughout the rest of your lifetime. But what about your children? What about your grandchildren? You know, the Bible tells us that the church will always be. That is Christ Church, not Christ United Methodist Church at 201 Market Street. You know, the scriptures that I read to you from Galatians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, Peter was saying that the new Gentiles had to follow all the old Jewish laws. But Paul, Paul stood up to Peter, who was the head of the church at the time, and he said, no, they don't. He says, know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Jesus Christ. Now, you can look at this verse from, from a couple of different directions. And one way is that Peter had been with the church from the very beginning. And he had grown accustomed to the way things had been and the way they did things. But it was Paul, who was the new guy, who says that we can't go on like this. And thank goodness that Paul stood up to Peter. Because if he hadn't, we may not be here this morning meeting. You know, how long do you think the church would have lasted if we had to follow all the old Jewish laws? It might have lasted one, two maybe three generations, and it would have been gone. We wouldn't even know what a Christian is today. Sometimes it takes a fresh set of eyes to see that things need to change. You know, some of our youth here lately had, had voiced their concerns about the youth group. And so the parents, the youth, and Pastor Kim King, we all got together and we brainstormed on how to change the youth program to make it better, to make it more interesting, so that youth, that more of them would want to come, and once they were there, they, you know, they would actually be enjoying themselves. So I, I have to tell you that, you know, out of this meeting came a lot of good ideas, and I myself am looking very forward to next year. I, I think it's going to be the best year ever for our youth program. And I can't help but think that maybe after Reverend Barnhart has been here for a while and has got acclimated, you know, to everything, that maybe we as a congregation need to sit down and do the same thing. And maybe we all need you know, to, to see what we can come up with. You know, I may not get everything that I want in a service. You may not get everything that you want in a service. But together, we can come up with a compromise and a service that would hopefully serve us all and the community better. You know? I think that most people here would like to see some change. And I truly believe that within one year, our attendance numbers would grow as we begin to hear, or as people begin to hear what we were, you know, we have something to offer that is different, you know. I looked on the, uh, the city website the other day just to get an, an idea of how many churches were in town. Inside the city limits, there are 13 other churches besides ours. 
You know, but on the, the city, on the borough's website, it lists the surrounding ones too. You know, Alberton and, 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 and some closer you know, areas, Owensdale. There was 34 other churches, you know, within a five mile radius of us outside of town. You know, 34 other churches, you know. So if you're, if you're new to town or you're new to the faith and you're looking for a church, what's gonna attract them to come here? What makes us stand out from anybody else? You know, out of all those churches, we all offer basically about the same type of service. You know what I mean? You know, one thing that I've learned about this church since I've been here is that it has gone through a lot of changes. This is the third church to stand here on this site because they kept outgrowing them. Matt, can you show us a picture of the first one? That was the very first church you know, that was here. Now, I couldn't imagine it what it would be like, but this church, it was filled to capacity each week. It was filled enough, you know, that they had to tear it down and build another one, you know. How great would that be, you know? It's a wonder the church didn't just sit back, you know, and say, you know what, our job is done, the church is full, you know, we're good, you know. And that's not what they did, you know. But no, they, that wasn't good enough for them. They were selfish and they wanted more, and thank God that they did. So they tore that church down and they built another. And what do you think happened? There's number two. That's a big church, folks. You know what I mean? I don't, to me, that looks to be about the same size as what we got here. You know, but what do you think happened? They filled that one up also. So they tore it down, and they built this one. You know? You know, and the second one there, they only built it, what was it, Joe, 26 years? You know, 26 years, that, that second church was only up before they tore it back down and built, built this one. You know I mean? That, that's amazing. You know, they, they filled it that quickly, you know? You know, and why did, they, you know, why did they tear it down and build this one? Because they weren't content to stay the same. They wanted to grow, so they changed. Even this very building has gone through many changes. You know, I wasn't here very long until I got drawn into a debate whether the sanctuary lighting you know, needed to be done. And uh, you know, most people didn't want it. And to be honest with you, I was one of them. But after extensive research, it was discovered that it was a good idea, and we went ahead and we did it. And a lot of people, you know, that didn't want it, you know, in the beginning, realized that it wasn't that bad. And so, as a matter of fact, I would like to show you a little bit of what our, I don't think anybody's ever seen these lights dim, to be honest with you. Matt, can you take it down one notch? You're not going to notice it much. It takes about three seconds in between. Take it down to the second one. Get on the third. Knock it off. Yeah, see, we're going. We're getting down. You know, if it was dark out, it would be pretty good. And then we're off. Take it all the way back up to all, all the way up. Yeah, there we go. Now, see, we couldn't do that before. Everything was on a bunch of switches in the back. You know, things were either on or they were off. You know, there was no in between. But we changed. We upgraded, and now we have the capability to do so much more. The same goes for our service. We need to upgrade so that it, too, will be capable of reaching out and drawing in more people to this church and, more importantly, to Christ. You know, Jesus said that we are, go out, we are to go out into the world and spread the gospel. He didn't say how to do it. He just said do it. You know, I want to finish by saying that I'm going to miss Reverend Henley. He is not just my pastor. He is my friend. But I am excited to be getting a new pastor and to see what she will bring to the table. You know, I've, I've seen some of the things that she's done in her current churches, and I hope that maybe we can do some of them here. But no matter, no matter what your feelings are on a female pastor, Reverend Barnhart should be given the utmost respect that she has earned through a lifetime of service. I hope you too will be open-minded to her to the idea of making some changes to our service so that we too, so that we can fill more of these pews out here. Because folks, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, bringing people to Christ, you know. And finally, I just wanna say, you know, change, change isn't always bad. It's what you make of it. Thank you. Ready?